She's your queen to be, a queen to be forever, a queen who do whatever His Highness desires. She's your queen to be, a vision of perfection. To quench your royal fire Completely free from infection To be used at your discretion Waiting only for your direction Your queen Let's see, so today we'll be talking about, let's see, it will be something easy like friendship or integrity or, oh, oh, no, 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 I was not prepared for this. All right, I think I'm together now. So today we're going to be talking about honoring marriage. Okay. Uh, hmm. So from my notes here, uh, let's talk about what you should not do. Maybe we should start with what you should do in a marriage. Uh, yeah, not going to work. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what the Lord says about marriage. Then I'm going to tell you as honestly as possible my experiences, you know, in marriage. I have a few years in. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Cool. Let's start out with what the Lord says. All right. So let's see. Our scripture comes from Exodus, the 20th chapter, uh, the 14th verse, which is about the middle of the Ten Commandments, pretty much. And it reads, you shall not commit adultery. Well, kids, I think that it, uh, pretty much speaks for itself. So my job's done here. Peace. <clears throat> A few moments later. What you mean I gotta go back and explain more to the kids? I read the verse. It speaks for itself. What? Man, I am trying to watch Lovecraft Country. I told her what? <sighs> Fine. All right, I'm back. Apparently I made an agreement with Bianca that I would actually do this lesson for you guys. Uh, so, okay, since I'm gonna do this, let's go all in. First, let's define, I guess, what a marriage is, right? So we as Christians uh, believe that a marriage is between a man and a woman, right? Uh, but not only that, we believe that it's not just between two people, it's a, a marriage that's actually between three. So the husband, the wife, and God. And God considers the marriage to be a covenant. So first let's yeah, define that for a second, right? The definition of covenant is really pretty easy. It just means an agreement, typically between two people. But since we're talking about the Bible, uh, the covenant is agreement between humanity and God and God's covenants aren't just an agreement it's a promise and God doesn't fail on any of his promises uh, in the case of the promise with Abraham it was basically 
if you will be faithful to me and follow the things that I ask you, I will bless you. However, if you do not do the things that I ask you, well, I cannot promise you that you'll enjoy the circumstances. All right, so now that we've taken the time to talk about what a covenant is, let's talk about uh, the design of the covenant, you know? So God created marriage to be a direct reflection of Jesus Christ's love to the people of the church. So it's designed to be this wonderful relationship, right, between three people where one person takes the other, right, similar to the way Jesus takes us exactly as we are, right, and loves you throughout. So to help me do that, I figured, hey, why not actually, you know, have a wonderful partner who loves me throughout talking to us about it. So what would you say really, I guess, about like the beauty, you know, and the design of mm -hmm. marriage? Um, I think the beauty of marriage, first and foremost, it's a ministry. Um, the way you choose and the way God has designed you to love each other, forgive each other, it, it really represents his love for his people and for his church. Um, marriage can be fun, so don't allow the world to deter you from marriage because of what you may see in the movies and TV and on social media. Um, it is fun. Um, also, God designed marriage because he doesn't want man to be alone. He wants you to have a, a, li a lifetime partner. So um, just keep those things in mind as you think about marriage. But it's, ve it's a very sacred relationship. Um, it's definitely different probably from, um, I would say, dating um, or just a girlfriend, boyfriend. It's on a whole, it's on a different level. So um, I would just say, you know, be mindful how you date because sometimes it can carry over into how um, your your actions can carry over into your marriage if you're ever considering that. But just keep in mind, it's something you should look forward to. God designed it that we should not be alone. Hence, why He created created Adam and Eve. All right. So continuing about what we're built for, we're built for relationships. So the first relationship, you know, that we enter as soon as we come to the world is with our parents. Right. Uh, that's the first love that we receive. Uh, the next relationships that we build as we kind of grow. Right. Are our friendships. And then at some point, you know, one of those friendships uh, ends up becoming marriage. Right. That that long term committed relationship uh, that we're talking about. So likewise, in between that, you know, we're, we're built for certain things. So sin comes in when we take elements for things that we're built for, such as is marriage, right? Uh, but we apply them at the wrong time. So think about like the first uh, sin really that was committed because Satan convinced man uh, that God didn't want him to have marriage or marriage knowledge. Um, we were meant to have knowledge. God was going to give Adam and Eve knowledge, right? But they weren't ready for the knowledge of sin yet, right? It, it adulterated, right? Uh, their, their, their senses. They didn't know what to do with it. You know, same thing. Um, the sin of adultery comes in when we apply sex, which is, we're, we're built for sex. I'm not going to lie to you. We are built for sex, but in the context of marriage, right? It's something that keeps couples together, right? So married couples together, right? It, it, it's it's another piece of that glue, right? That that keeps you in there. So when you take that element of sex and you apply that outside the marriage, it complicates things. That's what sin does, right? It complicates things highly. So let's go to the word for a minute and find out what happens when you apply uh, the element of sex outside the marriage in in terms of, of adultery, right? All right, so our second scripture of the day takes us to 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter, uh, the first through the third verses. So David is an example of what happens when we don't guard our hearts and minds, right? Um, uh, according to, you know, to, to God's word, right? So in this story, first off, once you read it, you'll notice David wasn't even supposed to be in uh, his castle, I guess you could say, um, at the time, right? Um, David was actually supposed to be at this point in the year off in the fields of war, right? Leading his army to defend Israel and, and building the army of Israel. So that alone tells us that sin often enough, uh, it takes you out of where you're supposed to be, 
right, in that moment of life. God always calls you to do something, and David was really known for, for doing that. He, he was pretty uh, prodigious, right, in, in doing what God asked him to do when he asked him to do it, unlike Saul, his predecessor, right? Um, but in this case, David had gotten kind of soft. He'd gotten kind of lazy. So in that moment, uh, while he was uh, at his castle one night, uh, he was looking from the rooftop and he saw a woman bathing, right? And that's often enough, right, how sin uh, starts. So he started lusting, you know. Now at this point, David was, what do you call it? David was single. He was single. He was unmarried. Um, but he was lusting at a woman from, from the roof. So thinking about that the first way, right? Um, sin changes our relationships. Um, how we think about people, especially I tell you as men, right? Um, the danger of sin in this case, it's directly reflected. He saw Bathsheba and he wanted her. Now, it, it, we're, we're built, you know, to be attracted to, to women. That's that's not the issue at hand, right? But when you uh, add things of a sexual nature into a relationship, <laughs> to be real with you, right? Uh, especially young men, it changes how you think about uh, the opposite sex, how you think about women. It becomes less of you see them as an individual. You see them less as uh, somebody to get to know, right? Um, which is the beauty really of like high school dating. If, you, if you're going to do that, it's really to, to learn how to get to know somebody, right? For, for who they are, not to get to know that woman for her body, for what she can do for you, right? It becomes less relational. Well, it becomes less, uh, yeah, it becomes less relational and more transactional, right? What you can get out of it, right? So David saw this woman. He was like, I want her and I want her now. All right. So... Once you get down to the, the third verse in the passage, right, you start to see really a good illustration of what happens uh, to all of us, right, when sin takes root, right? So it started with the simple sin of lust, right? So through his eyes, he just caught, you know, a, a naked woman bathing, and he just said, you know what, from that point, he decided, I want her. But the problem with sin is that it, it grows, right? And this isn't even a point where we can just, like, point at David. Let's think at how many times... Uh, you said, you know, in your mind, you know what, like this object, I want it. What will I do to get it? Right. What will I do to obtain it? You know, outside, especially like legal means. Right. How badly do I want it? Like I need it. Right. And that's often enough what sin does. It, it replaces things uh, that God meant for us. Right. To, to have eventually at some point, if, if it was meant for us. Um, but it's something, you know, that. It, it becomes a center of focus, right? Instead of God's will, instead of God's way. So my man, David, at this point, right? He just starts just flat out scheming, right? Like I saw this woman, I'm the king. What am I going to do to get her? So it started from, from looking, right? And then it ended up uh, moving to the next step of I want, right? Which is truly lust. And the next step was making actual steps, right? So the first thing that he did in this case, um, was actually it wasn't really violating um his own marriage it was violating another person's marriage that woman who he was looking at Bathsheba she was already married she was actually married to a soldier in his army already she was already a taken woman okay but he decided at that point you know what like I, I gotta have her so badly you know I, I'm, I'm gonna take steps to, to do it you know what and you can even argue he wasn't really in love with the woman right he, he never said a word to her he just saw her he just noticed that she was beautiful right so from verse three he pretty much just flat out just uses kingly power he asked who uh the woman was uh he found out so he had a chance uh not to pursue anything past that um after he found out that she was married she found out uh who the husband was and he basically just flat out said at this point yo bring her to me and they they slept together you know uh, as a consequence of sleeping together um <laughs> look as tends to happen, right? Um, that she would have pregnant, right? I mean, that's that's a consequence of, of sex. It's it's what we're wired for. It's what you're built for. Um, but, but that sin just blossomed like super quick, right? It went from a uh, sight to a man's idea to uh, his commitment to that idea, right? To acting on it. Um, yeah, to bring sin into uh, to another person's marriage right so he didn't even honor this wasn't even him dishonoring his own marriage at this point this was him dishonoring another individual's marriage so let's take a minute to really consider 
you know, how this got here, right? So how in our lives, how we can actually view uh, marriage, right? Honor marriage and view physical intimacy um, in that aspect, right? Within um, the view of God, how, how we keep all that in order, right? So as all things, you know, I think it's, you, you got to step back, right? Kind of like look at the, the grander picture, you know, of why God once again designed uh, physical intimacy within marriage, right? What it can cause, what it does. And I can tell you now within marriage, it's, it's because, I mean, it, it does cause, once again, it's like another piece of, of, of glue within the marriage, right? A God being, of course, the, the focal piece, um, taking the time to get to know each other, you know, you're, you're still dating. Like my wife said, you know, it's still your best friend. Um, but the physical intimacy piece is just, it's, it's another part of it, right? So I can also tell you, however, you know, being real, right? Like I didn't enter into my, what do you call it, into my marriage um, as, as a virgin, right? I can tell you it, it complicates things, right? It's something that you don't want to view and in, bring into the marriage. But I'll also tell you that physical intimacy, right, when you share that with another individual, uh, it is built, um, right? It, it, your, your brain's wired to repeat things. It's, it's wired to, I want to do this again. I want to do this again, right? Um, so the things that you'll do to what do you call it, not necessarily to obtain that, right? But even when you, if you were to stop it, right? Um, even when you enter into your marriage, right? It's something that you don't want to bring in. You know, you don't want to bring thoughts of another individual. You don't want to bring thoughts of your spouse with another individual into your marriage, right? So just taking that step back and kind of looking at it, especially from where you guys are right now, right? You, you cannot do this, right? You cannot bring this into your marriage. You cannot bring this complication that you don't need, right? That's outside of God's plan. You know, you have that opportunity to do that, to walk into this with a clean sh a slate, to share something that's so beautiful with one individual, right, for a lifetime. But to use an example of how to guard our hearts from it, right, consistently, let's just look to David from the beginning, right? David up till now in the Bible overall was pretty described as a pretty standout guy, right? Uh, he studied, he, he built that relationship with the Lord, right? The reason why he was able to build the kingdom of Israel, you know, uh, so quickly and so efficiently, right, in the time that, that he had there was because he was, he was walking day by day uh, with God. You know what I mean? He really was a man after God's own heart. You know what I mean? And that really comes in the fact that after he did sin often enough, that he changed. But before that, you know, he was headlong for God's, what do you call for God's message, right? For his people. He was headlong into being an example of where God can take you, what God can do for you, right? On the regular. So he knew God's plan for him overall. It's all this uh, basically sunk in, right? After a moment of, of laxness, right? When he finally decided, you know what? Let me, let me just chill out here for a second. Let me just do me for a second. And just that quickly, right, how everything just down spiraled. So just keeping in mind, right, like David, before all this, like keep, keep your mind and keep your mind in your heart, right? Like just engage in the fire you know, of the spirit. You know what I mean? Keep reading your word uh, daily. And I'm not saying just read it out of practice, like really read it, apply, find out what God wants for you to do in your life, right? And I do understand that as teens, you are pressured uh, into doing, to pressured into looking for things like physical intimacy you are once again you're, you're wired for it you're hormonal you're, you're, you're hormonal right now right because you're, you're getting your body's getting ready for something uh it's, it's getting ready ultimately for for marriage it's it's developing it's maturing to do these things right it's just not ready in the context because you're not in that relationship yet right but you're pressured into doing so you know what i mean and yeah i i, I understand that that you're pressured to do it but Keep focused where, where you are now. Almost, it's almost like a horse with blinders, right? Uh, blinders on, on a horse on a racetrack, right? I'm from Kentucky. Keep the horse kind of guiding in a, in a straight, in a straight line, in a straight and narrow. And it's for a reason, right? Because it has a goal. There's an ultimate goal. But first and foremost, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Don't. I'm not saying a lot of your body and say, hey, you know what? Like I feel feelings towards another individual. I feel sexual feelings towards this individual i'm not saying lie to yourself and say that you don't have them you definitely have them right nothing good ever comes from from lies i'm saying manage them right i'm saying okay you know what step back right and like david did in this case david step forward step back when you look at it you know what check yourself right let the spirit check you because nine times out of ten if you're thinking about it it's probably the spirit inside there convicting you right check yourself for a moment 
see, okay, why am I thinking this about this this individual now? Nothing wrong with being attracted to, to a person. Once again, it's also, don't lie to yourself. Um, nothing wrong with that, but, but step back, right? Control that, you know what I mean? You, you don't need to, to jump every every individual, right? I mean, and, and you get nothing out of it, they get nothing out of it at the end of the day, right? So it's, it's checking yourself, it's being honest, right? It, it's really asking yourself, am I really walking, you know, in, in, in God's stead? Right? Am I walking in Jesus instead? Am I doing what, what the Father would have me to do from day to day? You know, Because there's a piece of that covenant that we talked about, right? God will bless you. God wants to bless you. If, if that's what you really want, you know, in, in time, God will likely bless you with the, what do you call it, with the spouse that loves you for who you are, for who he developed you to be. But you got to take the time to develop into who he wants you to be to find that spouse that he wants you to be with, right? I had to. You know, I was an awkward cat. You know, I still have my awkward moments, but I, I was an awkward cat before I met my, well, I'm still awkward once again. But when I met my, my wife, I was an awkward cat, but God developed her to a point where she had dated other individuals. And she was like, you know what? Like, I don't want what I'm used to. So she tried dating someone, someone different, but God brought her to me. I didn't necessarily find her. God brought my wife to me. It, it was a blessing. And I'm glad to have her and, and by extension my child in my life. But I'm, I'm glad to have my that lifelong uh, friend within my life, you know. So honor that. You know what I mean? Honor that. Cherish that. Hold that in, in Jewish culture, right? To honor something means to, to hold it solid, right? Like they imagine it like holding a, a rock or a piece of gold, right? And dishonor is the opposite. It's like walking through mist. Like hold it. Honor that, you know. Cherish that relationship that, that you'll have. But for now, build yourself until you find that relationship because a marriage is a relationship between two full people unlike what the world tells you it's not you trying to find uh yourself it's two full people so all right uh, i love you guys and i hope you guys have a blessed sunday